Hello everyone and thank you for watching the Confidently Beautiful segment of VNTV today. I have the honor to introduce Wendy Kim, our first guest of today's show. Thank you for coming to our cozy VNTV show and, and please introduce yourself and, and I really enjoy spending our time with you today. If you could, uh, we want to give you the kind of the yeah. background to introduce what you want to say to our <coughs> audience members about you, who you are and yeah. what's your moral fiber. Yeah, so basically I am an international best-selling author, mm -hmm. speaker, and transformation coach, and I'm really passionate about empowering women of color, especially Asian Amer mm -hmm. American women, to come from behind the shadows, yeah. to step up and stand out and make a difference in the world. So that's my passion. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I can start off by telling a little bit about my story. Please do. Please, Please, do. Please do. Yeah, yeah. I'd love so to hear it. I was... I'm actually half Korean, half Caucasian, uh -huh. and you look I, more Asian. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah, you were right. Korean. Cool. Yeah, wow. But yeah, so people assume yeah. that, so I definitely identify more. You definitely, yeah. As mm -hmm. a Korean, yeah. but nice. I actually was. My parents split when I was really young, okay. and I lived with my dad in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm from basically the age of three to 11. Okay. And I was always the only Asian kid in my school. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up feeling like I want to blend in. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't want to speak Korean. I didn't want to learn about my culture. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to eat the food because I thought, okay, well, I need to be like everybody else around me. So your father's Korean. <clears throat> My father's German. German. Oh, your father's mm. German. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Your mom's Korean. And okay. so I lived in a very like homo homogeneous yeah. white neighborhood. Sure. And then it was interesting because when I was 11, I moved to Hawaii mm -hmm. to live with my mom. Okay. And in Hawaii is very Asian, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's from Hawaii. Yeah. 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 And so there it was interesting because even though I looked like everybody, Cult the way I behaved was not very Asian. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So people, um, I remember one time I was in sixth grade math class and the teacher was asking questions and I was, I was excited and I was raising my hand and giving the answer. And then after, and everyone was looking at me like this. <laughs> they were like this and they were giving me stink eye. In Hawaii, we say stink eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they, after class, a girl came up to me and she said, Wendy, you're such a show off. Mm -hmm. We all know the answers, but we don't raise our hand. Mm -hmm. And so from that point on, I thought, oh, I need to blend mm -hmm. in, but I need to change myself mm -hmm. to blend in here. Mm -hmm. So I need to be quiet and I need to not really express myself because otherwise I won't be accepted. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty much how I lived most of my life. I see. I did what I was told to do. I see. So at, at what point did you transition into who you are now in writing your book? Yeah. You know, if you could share with the, us your journey towards that. Definitely. So when I was in my mid thirties, I, I know that's hard to believe. I'm actually <laughs> I thought you were in your 20s. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm 42 now. <laughs> so when I was in my mid-30s, I was working for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. So I achieved some level of success mm -hmm. in corporate America. Yes. I was like a mom and I was mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. And then I just thought, is this, is this what I want to do for the next 30-something mm -hmm. years of my life? Corporate America? Yeah, and I was yes, like, yeah. oh, no, I want to... I yeah. can totally relate. Really? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so at that point, I just thought, I can't live like this mm -hmm. for the next 30 years of my life. What what do I want to do? Because you weren't passionate about it. Exactly. It, it wasn't exactly. one of your passions. Yeah, and then I, I thought, okay, well, I want to I wanna change the world. I want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how the heck am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and I rem And especially culturally. Like yes. my, mm -hmm. I was terrified of leaving my job mm -hmm. because I was successful. I had achieved the American dream. Mm -hmm. Like my mom is from Korea. Mm -hmm. She was really poor. Mm -hmm. She came here, she was uneducated. Mm -hmm. And 
so she was so proud of me mm -hmm. to have achieved to go to a good college mm -hmm. and make good money yeah. and so I I really struggled because I I thought okay I want to have more fulfillment in my life but my mom mm -hmm. I don't think she'll understand and I don't want to disappoint her sure. so that was like a big conversation yeah. I was having mm -hmm. in my head and but then eventually I just got to the point where I was really unhappy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I don't want to live like this for my kids. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You yes. know, like being a mom changed you. Exactly. Right? You have a totally different perspective. Yes. And mm -hmm. I wanted my, my son has special needs. I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to spend more, more time, time with him yeah. instead of working like 80 hours mm -hmm. a week. Yes. And, doing email at night and things, <laughs> and not being present. You don't longer mm -hmm. want to be a robot. Yes. Or a zombie. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so at that point I said, you know what, like I just, I need to get out of this corporate job. And I, I was, at the time, I was really interested in more in finances. Mm -hmm. So I took on, um, so I started off doing financial coaching okay. and helping people yeah. to be more sure. empowered in, in their finances. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I thought, okay, well, I'll just try this for a year. Mm -hmm. I'll just try coaching for a year, and if it doesn't work, I can always go back to my job. Sure. And then from there, then I, then I started to to get more into not just finances, but really the whole part of being a human, mm -hmm. right? Yes, definitely. And and really helping empowering women in particular women of color mm -hmm. to break through those cultural barriers sure. and and to break through those cultural expectations mm -hmm. because a lot of times we've grown up feeling like we have to be a certain way we have to live not according to what we want but what according our family our and family our culture needs, yes. tells mm -hmm. us and then especially Definitely. with Asian culture mm -hmm. yes. there's so much submiss you know, submissiveness yes. right exactly in the histories that's exactly. Why, that's why I, I, I love about your book. I haven't read it, but I read the uh, summary of yes. it. And so there, um, I can totally relate. Mm -hmm. I grew up with my mom, see, very adamant about everything. Mm -hmm. So we always, want, we always grew up in trying to be somebody else that we are not. Exactly. And, and we're used exactly. to it. Exactly. And so in your book, you called, you have grown up com conforming. Yes. People pleasing yes. and afraid to take risk. Exactly. And when I read them, I'm like, oh my God, that's how I felt. Because yeah. I, I raised up only f no two words, guilt and ashamed. Mm. So if, yes. if, if anything that made you feel guilty and ashamed, you, work, you can't do. Mm. Yes. And you couldn't do, but end up, you only end up being somebody else. Yes. So can you elaborate on that uh, quote for me? Because it's very interesting how you put it into such a short sentence, but it means so much being Asian American. Yeah, so you're asking if I could do a quote? Uh, you can elaborate that quote. Okay, yeah. oh, elaborate yeah. on the yeah. quote, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we spend, again, Beyond Blending In is the name of my yeah. book. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to blend in and make other people happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if people weren't happy with me, then there was something that I did wrong. Well, yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. so I, I needed to do what, say whatever, do whatever it took to make the other people happy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I wasn't true to myself mm -hmm. for a long, yes. uh -huh. a long, yes, a long time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't authentic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because. Yes. I just felt like if I really showed people who I was, then they wouldn't like you. That they wouldn't like me yes. and they wouldn't mm -hmm. accept yes. me. Mm -hmm. And so it, there, there was a process of, um, uh, and I think maybe with uh, you've heard about this landmark, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. um, doing personal development yeah. mm -hmm. helped yeah. me yeah. to really shed that mm -hmm. and to see. And it's, it's really ironic that I'm on this show. It's really <laughs> ironic that I'm a public speaker <laughs> because I prefer to hide. Uh, well, no hiding no, here. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> and, and I used to, I, like, it, when I would go to maybe a meeting or a classroom, I would always sit in the back mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say anything. 
because I was so afraid that I would say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But then over time, I realized, actually, what I say does matter. Yes. All of us have our own unique perspective. Definitely. Definitely. And all of us have something important to share. Definitely. Right? Yes. And so I realized when I actually did say something, it could make a difference with someone. Mm -hmm. So really the shift for me happened when I started focusing less on myself and how I looked mm -hmm. and how I was perceived and more on how can I make a difference with people? Mm -hmm. How can I be there yeah, for you people? You make a great point because how can you truly help someone if you're not truly happy yourself? Definitely. Right? Yeah. So you found that inner peace. And then now and you're now, free. And now you're free. And yes. you're able to help mm -hmm. other people. Because there's people out there who or trying to help other people, but if they're not truly, you know, finding their passion and their, what their happiness themselves, it's hard for them. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And exactly. I, I can actually speak firsthand with that. So, yeah. But you know, we all go through things, so. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank so, you. So my 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 second and last question for you: that what motivates you to get up every morning, and what do you get out want to get out of your life now and yeah. the future? Question. Yes. That's a great question. What motivates me is seeing women and women of color realize their dreams. Mm -hmm. So most of us have this thing I call dormant dreams, mm -hmm. where maybe, maybe you've thought about it and then it, you don't tell anybody because you think, oh, I can't do that, I'm, I'm not good enough. No, no, oh, no, even if I told someone, they'd be like, what, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we all have those dreams within us. Sure. And all it takes really is having support Definitely. and having mm -hmm. someone believe yeah, in you, yeah. mm -hmm. which, is where, which is Very where the true. coaching comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in our head, it seems impossible. It seems like, so I, I, work right, I worked with a woman who wanted, she was a former addict mm -hmm. and she wanted to start a drug rehab and she had this dormant dream for like 20 years. She had done nothing with it. Mm. And in her head, it was just too big. It was impossible. So we started working together and I was like, no, that's not impossible. That's really doable. Let's just take it step by step. Okay. And so now she is, she started a rehab program. She's working with addicts and helping them in their recovery and it doesn't have to be that hard. Mm -hmm. As long as you can get the support and you can have someone who's there for you to to help you break things down, it can actually be pretty simple. So that's that's really what gets me out of bed in the morning. That's oh, great. thank yeah. you, thank you. Thank you for joining us today at mm -hmm. VNTV. Thank you so much. And, um, and it, uh, seems, it seems like it's just this, we're all at, only at the surface. Yes, We'd definitely, like we go, on, you know, I love it. Deeper deeper into that I book love because it. this is just an introduction to yourself. Yeah. And you know, you re well, I really, um, I want to let our audience know we met through ACMA, you know, yes. through the Ransom uh, Work yeah. for Asian mm -hmm. Empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. But what I really liked about you is you have that, you know, what I call the four pillars of life. Mm -hmm. You have your purpose. You have a positive energy, you're passionate, and you're persistent, mm, right? So I you, love that. That's my four P's I'm actually mm -hmm. working on. That's so amazing. Like, yeah, you have yeah. it to the T. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you coming in today and Dana. And, 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 and you know, when people say it's impossible, mm -hmm. the impossible within it is like, I am possible. Exactly. So if, if you think it that way, then it will change your mindset forever. Exactly. So thank you again for mm -hmm. watching um, our show today. And I recommend, highly recommend, you to go everyone to go to amazon.com to purchase her amazing book beyond planning in and um, please remember to love yourself and to be happy and do things passionately mm -hmm. and that you only have what unique self in yourself we are all imperfectly perfect thank you thank you vntv thank you